he will go and come back. But we have the acting mayor of Sidibeng, a district municipality, who is attending. Uh, I did speak with the mayor of Johannesburg yesterday. Uh, he assured me that his team will be here in full force. Uh, so, so, colleagues, those are the apologies. Can we accept the apologies? Agreed. Thank you very much. Can we confirm the agenda as I've just presented to you? It is amended in terms of just the sequence. Agreed. Uh, okay. Uh, let me let, uh, let me allow Mayor mm. Masina. <laughs> he's not. He's noticed something. Mm, they've called him S. Masina. Mm. Uh, you have an an, an, an S. Okay, Mayor, Mas <laughs> Mayor Masina has been given an, a, an initial that he doesn't have. Okay, that, that will be corrected. So, colleagues, you are welcome. As I said, this is a very, very important uh, uh, premier's coordination forum, <clears throat> extremely important. We have been attending national coordination forums, the PCC, the President's co. Uh, coordination council we have been attending those meetings uh, to bring all the plans for the for the next uh, five years together but as a country we have a national development plan and this is the last decade of it so the idea is to align everything we are doing to that plan if that our plan links up with the UN uh, sustainable development goals uh, this is the decade the la that last decade that the, U that the U.S. SDGs man, should take root. That's why we're going to have municipalities presenting to us, uh, even though you have been in place since 2016, the, the outer years of this term of office, we must still make sure there's full alignment. And I want to emphasize, colleagues, that it really does not matter which party is in charge of which municipality. We've got to work together. That's what the Constitution of our Republic enjoins us to do. We've got to work together. We've got to pull in the same direction. We've got to support uh, the same vision. And when I present, I'm going to reaffirm what the vision of our province is. Uh, and, and we have worked with municipalities over, over years, uh, including since 2016, to pursue that vision. What, along what we call the corridors. What are we trying to do in each of these corridors? When, you, when MEC Mutara presents later around the infrastructure pipeline, you will see what the provincial government is bringing to invest in your, in your corridors, in the, your municipal spaces. And when you present later, we want to hear uh, and see that you yourselves are directing your resources and your efforts in the same direction so that we have greatest impact, we improve the quality of life of the people of our province, and in that way, move Gauteng forward and grow Gauteng together as part of our contribution to the National Development Plan. So that's really what, what we're going to be doing today. We want to reinject life into our intergovernmental relations system. It has to work. There's no choice. We don't have a choice. We can't walk away from each other. We, we have to work together. If we don't do so, people on the ground are going to be suffering because we are big happy. Uh, in, this, in this context, therefore, there's time for politics, and we know where to play politics in the chambers. But there's also time for delivery, all the time. And when it comes to delivery and development, there's no one sphere of government that can work alone and get the desired results. And we know when communities are angry, they really don't want to know which sphere is responsible. They just say the government. Uh, when they are upset, they are unhappy, uh, they, are, they are not satisfied, they say the government. And we can't be pointing fingers at each other. No, it's not us. So this is a very, very important thing for our province to work together, especially on 
as I say, on the infrastructure projects, because the infrastructure story is the biggest driver of economic development. If we direct our infrastructure spending, social infrastructure, where we are building our schools and our clinics and our sports facilities and our libraries, uh, direct that social infrastructure uh, together with economic infrastructure, where we are building roads, we are, we are investing in public transport, we are building other infrastructure to help stimulate economic development in the nodes where we want, including you, you, where you are putting investments into water and sanitation, investments into electrification. Uh, all those things must be driven by a single purpose and a single vision. And, and that's what really we are coming to do today. So when the municipalities present later, we will be very keen. We have already had a budget Lukhutla, together. Uh, all the municipalities, especially the districts and the three metros, uh, made good presentations. We, we interrogated those issues. So even from a budget point of view, although our system, our financial uh, planning system is not quite aligned because municipalities' financial year is not quite aligned with the province and national, but our spending should be aligned. At least we should be able to see where are we building new houses. Uh, and in that, where are we investing in public transport uh, to support that? And what type of economic activity will be there to support where we are building houses? Uh, and where we have economic nodes, where are people go who work there going to live? Uh, it, in that we want to roll out an effective and responsive modern uh, education system that is able to prepare the people of our province for the future. And we want our healthcare system to work. Uh, we want our departments that are dealing with uh, poverty to also have a clear sense of targeting. Uh, what are we, where is the greatest concentration of poverty in Kauteng? And where are the efforts to deal with that uh, coming from? And in each corridor, if you think of Ekurulene uh, Mayor, we also need to know each corridor's profile very, very well. That's why the National District Development Model fits very well with what we have already been doing in, in our province. What we call the corridor approach fits very well with that district development model. So on that note, uh, colleagues, I want once more say welcome. Uh, there's nobody who's leaving before we finish. <laughs> And nobody was leaving before we finish. <laughs> you are out of town, Mayor. You, are, you have come to a, a city. You are out of town. So spend, spend this time, quality time well. If there's anything you will indicate to, uh, to me, but I would be reluctant to release the mayor. So we must listen to all the presentations. Uh, and I'll tell you that we will try to drive this uh, program as fast as we can. So welcome, uh, colleagues, uh, and thank you very much. Uh, members of the media, uh, we welcome you. We often do our business away from you. Yeah. You can see we are very uncomfortable, <laughs> that we are doing everything in front of you. But this is last note. This is the new openness that we must preach. <laughs> So I want to go straight to the presentation. Is that okay, colleagues? Very good. Okay, so <clears throat> it's better to present standing. If I can just get the mic, the loose mic. So colleagues, okay, the, ro the, ro the roving mic will arrive. Thank you very much. So colleagues, you know that map shows where the, the place of our province. Uh, you see that we are the smallest uh, province in land mass, but we are the heart. Uh, and the choice of red is deliberate. We are the heart that pumps blood 
into this body in economic terms, in this body called South Africa. Uh, we'll come to a bit of detail about that. And arguably the heart that pumps blood into the body, the SADC region. Uh, so I'm in the presentation you have you have in your in your packages, do you? No, but this this is an updated version because we are working every day and you'll get it. Uh, don't worry. You'll get it. So we are going to cover the introduction and deal with the vision. The vision. What is our long term vision? Because without a vision, you can't just work hard. Uh, you are working towards one. And at the back of the vision is the plan. The plan is very concrete measures and very clear things you are going to do and with clarity of who's going to do what and where. And also with the certainty of directing the resources. What are your available resources? Um, and then we'll go and deal with the corridors. I like the story of the five corridors because that is the principal thing that, uh, that joins us together. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the spatial vision. This issue of municipalities deal with the spatial development framework. Uh, and what is it that, what is, the, what is the spatial form of the province that we want? And deal with what we call Within the context of the Houghton City region, what we articulated in January this year, in, in February, as the move, the move towards a single multi-tier special economic zone. To build a province where, in the end, we will be an, an economic zone as a province. And there are many models across the world. And then we will have very, very specific infrastructure projects. So I'm going to deal with the architecture of them, and MEC Mutara later will go into great detail, including which ones, how many are located where. Uh, in, and including the sense of how much money in five years we are going to spend on infrastructure in each corridor. And then we will conclude with the, the important question about coordination and collaboration uh, on, on investment, including coordination and collaboration with the private sector. Uh, so on that note, so the first thing to understand is the current strengths and challenges facing our province. So we are a unique province. Uh, we have the highest GDP per capita, that point is made. We, are, we contribute 42% to the country's industrial output, 53% to our national exports, and 41% of the tourist arrivals, principally because of our country. All tourists who are coming to South Africa, 41% of them don't just arrive, most of them arrive here. But 41% of them, after arriving at Oar Tambo, they spend a few days here. That's what is called the tourism spend, it contributes to job creation. We have the highest human development index, and human development index is important because not just the GDP, whilst the rest will contribute 35% to the GDP. Human development index measures just investment in people and the well-being of people. These are our strength on the left-hand side. Our challenges are on the right-hand side. We have high levels of inequality. So if we're thinking 10 years from now and beyond, we've got to tackle, we must reinforce the right, the left-hand side, our strength. We must reinforce them and not lose that edge. Uh, including that we are the seventh largest economy in Africa. And we must, we must deal decisively with the weaknesses and the challenges and the problems on the, on the right hand side. Uh, spatial injustice persists. We are not succeeding to bring the legacy of spatial injustice. Uh, 
and, and I think when we deal with infrastructure projects and this investment, we, were, we must be seeing how that is helping us. So this distorts the urban form. So we are an urban region that has got a very problematic urban form, dispersed. You see there later, we, we also talk about uh, unmanaged urbanization, urban sprawl, location of people further and further away from economic opportunities, and the racial character of that urban uh, sprawl persists. Uh, we, we, as people who are charged with the responsibility to drive uh, government, we must contribute all of us to tackling those uh, issues. There's also a big, big phenomenon of informalization. So informalization is persisting. People settling where there's no proper, there's not been proper planning for them. Uh, and people arrive into our province. They arrive every day. They, but every year we have more than 250,000 people who, who, who arrive and they just settle everywhere. And if they don't have services, they help themselves. Uh, or they push for municipalities to bring services there. It's not what we are planning. And what, does that, what that does is to help perpetuate a special form that is undesirable. That's not what we want. Uh, we are chasing people. We are not planning for them. We are chasing them. Government is following where people are settling illegally. Uh, instead of directing, putting infrastructure in advance to say we want people who arrive in Ebu Lane. In the next few years, this is the areas where we are building, we are settling people. Uh, so in, in Swan, say people arrive in the periphery and when they see just one open piece of land, they also occupy it. Especially strategic land parcels, they also occupy that. Uh, and we, we also have a difficulty with, uh, so we are now developing a strategy that uh, MEC Maide will bring to cabinet in, the, in, the, in January around land, the prevention of land invasions, because the, the whole province is characterized by illegal land invasions. That's what is going to drive your infrastructure spending. Instead of asking where we want to reinforce development, where the economic nodes are coming up, we are going to go where people are just settling themselves. So that, that's a very important issue to deal with about how are we going to do this. So another additional set of information. So where we are now, yes, we contribute 35% to our country's GDP. We are the seventh largest economy in the continent. I've already spoken about HDI and the quality of life. 15.2 million people live in Kaldi. Uh, 25 years ago, it was just slightly half, 7.7, 7.8 7 million people were living in Kaldi. It is anticipated that by 2030, there will be an additional 3 million people in this. And that is also conservative. So we could be at 20 million people by 2030, uh, as, as a center that attracts uh, more people. We know that that puts a great deal of pressure on government as a whole, municipalities and provinces. In the healthcare space, education, every year there's a large number of, of students who are not coming from our system that we have to plan for. Healthcare, it's not just about healthcare, we know the whole subject is 21 million visits, uh, uh, patient visits uh, per annum. Human settlements, we know. Even if we have built 1.2 million houses, we know that. The pressure on housing delivery is huge. And so we are chasing this, uh, this target that is a moving target. So we, that's the emphasis is that we need to plan together to respond to those challenges. I spoke earlier about our national development plan. You know it. I'm not going to spend time on that. 
uh, talking about our special, I mean, our vision as the county city region, our vision for 2030. So you know that the anchor of that vision is what in the past five years we have been calling the, the pillars, the ten pillars of our transformation, modernization, and reindustrialization strategy. So what we call Growing Houghton Together, which is what we are working with you on now in the next ten years, but firstly in, the, in this five years we are working with municipalities on. We must look at the economy, what type of economy we want to build. We must change the special settlement patterns. We must modernize our economy. All economies are changing in the world. We need a modern state, not just in terms of capacity, but with new ways of functioning in the new world. And probably most importantly, re-industrialize Houghton. The areas in Houghton that have been industrialized, we will come back to that when we deal with the corridors, build a new economy in each of our corridors, in each of our regions. Uh, and then deal with human development. That's what accelerated social transformation is. The well-being of people, healthcare, their level of skill and education. Uh, their well-being in terms of access to basic services, water and sanitation, uh, but also environment, the access to a, a clean environment. That's what accelerated social transformation is. And build a government, again, that has capacity, but that also, that has ethics. At the center of our governance model is, is ethics, is integration, is cooperation, is collaboration, clean governance, working together, uh, delivering together, and building the capacity to do things, not just the capacity to plan. Government has a terrible track record. We plan, but when it comes to getting things done. So in, this, uh, in the past five years, we have improved in certain areas on capacity to do things. And the hallmark of this term, from where the provincial government stands, is capacity to get things done getting the results. Uh, infrastructure is going to be key. You will hear that infrastructure story later again. Uh, public transport and other infrastructure, not just public transport. Uh, public transport is a catalyst, we know, uh, but other infrastructure. And lastly, our place in the African economy. We want to build an economy. Everything we do in Swan, in Joburg, and in Ebrulen and in Sidibe and in the West Bank, must talk to how we see our, our, our province as the industrial hub, economic hub of South Africa, growing with Africa. Uh, because uh, that's our country's vision. We are, look, we are an important player in African affairs, and we are an important driver of Africa's industrialization. So having said that, so we are here failing these pillars, colleagues, uh, but we also want to emphasize that we want <laughs> government that's driven by evidence. Evidence. Policy must be made on the basis of evidence, not on the hoof. Not just one morning we wake up and then there's a new policy there and then there's change of policy there. No, we need evidence. We need to make decisions that can also last. We must assess if the the programs we are implementing are giving us the results because if they don't give us results, we must abandon them. There's no need to pursue a policy that's not giving you the desired outcome. <coughs> uh, that's very, very important. But even in dealing with policy, yes, we want to involve communities. That's why we have the result. We want popular participation. And lastly, we want to allocate resources appropriately. Municipal budgets, and provincial budgets. We also want to influence national budget allocation. That when departments are given money, where that money is spent as national departments and SOEs in Houghton, it must not be dumped on us. It must be spent on our plan. We must determine we have this need for water, uh, water treatment plants. Uh, we have this need for health care and then be able to shape how national government comes in there. We have this need for public transport. 
how SOEs must come in there so that we don't have a situation where sometimes money is brought one year, the following year it's not there. And municipalities, you know this thing called uh, fiscal dumping, but also what is this? Unmandate? Unfunded mandates. Yeah, it's the biggest thing. Unfunded mandates. But if we plan together over a medium term, three years, five years, ten years, you know what, where the funding for these projects are over a period of time. And you make provision for those things you can do, we will make provisions for those things we can do. And national government must make provisions for those things it can do and must do in your spaces. And then we work together better in that way. Again, let's just re-emphasize that the, the, the vision, we are a city region. We are, not, we are not planning to be one. We are already one. The Houghton economy is a single economy. Our, our special space is evolving. You can no longer tell where Tswani ends and Johannesburg starts or Ekuruleni starts or Ekuruleni ends. You can't tell where the West Rand ends if you are coming towards Johannesburg. And even with the, where the Swan, even in, okay, Sidney, Sidney and the West Rand are still more sparse, but there's more development between, between the three metros that closes, it defies all municipal space. You can't even see. And less development in the, in the two districts. There you can still see you are driving there's empty vast tracts of land. But in Joburg, in Swani, and the West End, I mean, and uh, Ekurulen, you can't see where one municipality starts and the other. So we have, we have developed, this, our cities are now more moving towards uh, each other. Uh, what, we, what we call uh, an urban conurbation that has polycentric characteristics. Uh, and we want to emphasize that we also want to ensure that we bring private sector investments and public sector investments into the corridors together to make the greatest impact, especially to help us catalyze this special economic zones. Because municipalities can do everything. If your economy is not growing, uh, you can spend all the money on other things. It will catch up with you. People will not be able to pay for services because they are unemployed. We we'll just catch up with you. Uh, before we know it, you will collapse. We also want to emphasize that inter not only are we doing this provincial, this provincial, this PCF for ourselves, but Houghton is also now increasingly planning with the neighboring provinces. Because development knows no boundaries, colleagues. Development knows no municipal or provincial boundaries. We are working, we have, we have been meeting with the Northwest Provincial Government to plan together for the western part, the northwestern part. So Tswani right up to Bujana. It's now developing, so Rustenberg is, and, and Tuani are growing into each other. The meeting point is half a bit. If you're thinking of City Bay, it's the same thing. Across the Val River, development, if we, if we do the things that we explain and we, are, we have been working on now well, we will have to work with the Free State as well, to plan across the Simahulu, uh, Paris, so that we we have one plan that's not uh, limited by the river, but it harnesses the river. West End, we do the same, planning right up to Pochester uh, with the Northwest, uh, and then with Limpopo and with Pumalang, because these cities are also growing towards uh, each other. So that's, that's part of our long-term vision. Uh, if any one of you wakes up in 2050, or you live up to 2050, you will see that it will, this place will be different. That the space between Wheat Bank and this area in Ekurule will be one, one consolidated development. But if we plan it well, it will benefit 
both provinces, the people in both provinces. That's what we are interested It must be planned. It must not just happen on its own. And if these provinces also work together to invest and direct resources in those areas, it will stimulate economic development. The last area that, <clears throat> that has to do with our vision is about the spatial vision. We want balanced, a balanced development. We don't want development to be concentrated in the three metros only, and the two districts are just sites of poverty. We don't want all, all investments to be in the three metros only and the three districts. At the moment, that is the reality. But we must temper with that reality. And we must consciously ensure we redirect certain investments so that how they must be balanced in that sense. But we also don't want industrial development that destroys the environment, including the agricultural Land, agricultural land that is the culture. So we must preserve certain parts of our province as green spaces, certain parts of our province also as food production and agricultural spaces. Uh, because development, it's easy to, to, all land can be taken up by developers to put up industrial, including the land that we want to ensure it continues to be. Uh, for ag ag agricultural development. So it's very, very important that we, we have what we call balanced development. That also includes enhancing the opportunities of the fourth industrial revolution, but ensuring we, we have sustainability uh, in there, we have integration, we have, we have inclusion. We've, and at the back of that, uh, we have uh, state-of-the-art infrastructure. So if we do that in the whole province, we have clearer sense that uh, Mayor Inswani, that land must be preserved for agriculture. All of us, you have through your spatial development frameworks, you know your spatial development frameworks are driving you about where, where to do what. And then we can work with the private sector to direct development. At the moment, the private sector is just driving us as well. Much as informal settlements are driving us, people are, the private sector is just also driving us. We're not helping to direct them where to invest and what to invest in. So in there, I won't spend too much time on that. That's still part of our special vision. We want to be this urban conurbation, this, this urban extract cannot just be a place that has no green space that has got no, no preserved uh, development, including limiting certain types of development, undesirable development, must be, we, we do development approvals. If people want to come and build certain type of business activity in certain areas, we must be able to say no. But if we work with the private sector proactively, it will be something that is not punitive but understood. 18 aspirations, you know this. So these 18 aspirations, we would like you in your planning from now to start articulating them as municipalities. Uh, something that is, how do we ensure that no one goes hungry in Calgary? Currently, the West Rand and City Bay are the areas of high concentration of poverty and hunger. These two districts, we call them the red districts in terms of development. Uh, in the metros, there are certain areas that have high concentrations of poverty and hunger. In Swan, the northern, northwestern areas, Winterfeld and, and those areas, the highest concentration in Hammanskral, the highest concentration of poverty and hunger. Ekurulene, you also know which areas in Ekurulene have the highest concentration of people who are poor. Uh, Johannesburg, the south, and certain parts of the north uh, uh, would be the same in that, in that way. Uh, so in each of those areas, colleagues, we have a particular aspiration which is linked to our national development plan and the 17 UN, DG, UN, UN SDGs. Uh, so you look at them, I won't take you through them, all of them. They total, together they constitute our vision. We need 
We want to work with municipalities. You are not planning for yourselves. Let's plan for government. Even if in 2021 you may not be the leadership, let's ensure we have such a strong and sound integrated plan for our municipalities that talks to the province plan, that talks to the national development plan. And we can say every cent we spend every day is in support of the plan. So what happened, when we have that, it doesn't matter who is in government. Every, we must hold everybody to the plan in that, in that kind of way. So all those specific areas, you will, you will have an opportunity to go through them in great detail. But our 18 aspirations are important for the Houten we want by 2030. We've got, so we have the aspirations, they are timeless. We must work on them for 20 years, for 30 years. We must, but they are immediate priorities. Economy, jobs, and infrastructure. So the reason we have called you today to talk a lot on, on infrastructure and investment is because that is the number one priority. And that's what the people want us to deal with. Uh, and that's what is undermining the social progress we have made. The more people are unemployed, it doesn't matter whether we are doing well on social progress, it undermines that. Uh, education and skills help people to, uh, to, to be able to harness the opportunities in the economy. Well-being, health, uh, it's a, it's as well as social and, and economic uh, indicator itself. But safety is very important as well. Crime is too high in our province. So we should be working towards a common goal and common anti-crime campaigns and operations. Social cohesion. We are a dynamic province that represents the whole continent and indeed the whole world. But there's no sense of togetherness and oneness. Part of it is because our people, others are rich, others are poor. It's a big part of the, what contributes to lack of social cohesion. Others are living well, others are not. So how do we contribute to building social cohesion and food security? We can't, if our goal is to ensure that no one goes hungry, we must be able to do an accurate count in every municipality. Which are the families where the there's, there's, there's inadequate food. And how do we develop a program with, with communities and these affected families to address food security? So, you, you, so those, some of those, those areas we finalize in the details. And the human settlements, where are we locating our people? Uh, how is that related to op economic opportunities? Uh, how is that helping us to address poverty uh, and hunger. And we need a state that can really deliver, that can really drive development. A state that every cent we get from the public, we must spend that money well. It is an obligation. It's not an ideology. It's an obligation. It's a basic obligation. Ethical governance is a basic obligation and necessary requirement. And we must ensure that all municipalities and provincial government departments rise to the occasion. This thing of bad audit outcomes is something we must really, really turn around. And the municipalities that have been doing well, we really take our heads off for you, including provincial government departments that have been doing well. But we must tackle those that are not doing that. So clean governance, but capacity to deliver is important. So we can't, we can't say the reason we are not spending the money is because we are afraid of the AG. We must spend the money and still account for it well. So, uh, so Mayor Masina, we don't want clean governance obtained on the basis of not spending money. Your account has got lots of cash, but the people are suffering because you are afraid of spending the money. We don't want that. We must spend the money especially the infrastructure money, because it has got a big impact on jobs and quality of life. And we must make sure we put our, find our place in the continent. So, <clears throat> colleagues, this, the big part of our story is this one. So we are 
a province that has got five corridors. So one thing that we have been developing as a common story, regardless of which party is in charge, in the north, one thing I am certain is that we are together, Mayor, about what do we want to do in Swan. That's the northern corridor. And <coughs> Mayor Masini, we are together on what we want to do in the eastern corridor, our erectropolis. Uh, we're doing the same in Johannesburg. We, we are together at the level of the vision around what we want to do. There are certain areas and certain details we still have to ensure uh, with the, our colleagues in Johannesburg, certain areas. But what Johannesburg is in terms of the nature of the economy and which sectors will drive development, we are together uh, in that. The, the bit of detail will help us. And City Bay and the West Rand, that's where the industrialization the big factor on the industrialization. What we need to do there to change the fortunes of those areas. Again, we are together. There's a little bit of detail I'm going to go into now about the specifics of what needs to be done. So if you look at the Northern Corridor, what do we want to do there? The, first, the Northern Corridor is our administrative capital. It's the seat of government. But we want to evolve, and that economy, through conscious action, has been evolving into a new economy, automotive hub of South Africa. Thirty years ago, there were very few cars being manufactured in Calgary. More of the cars were being manufactured in Port Elizabeth and, and Etebi, Nelson Mandela Bay today, and, and Etebi. But now we produce 42% of our South Africa's cars through conscious government intervention. And that's why Tswani is going, we, we, we say it will evolve just from being a capital city to an automotive city. With big dimensions of that being the innovation, innovation sectors of the economy and a, a big, agriculture will still play a role in Tswani. You have vast tracts of agricultural land. Tswani has got key agricultural potential, but the auto industry is going to be the key driver. So what we are doing in Silverton and in, in Roslyn is not accidental, it's part of our vision. And Mayor, working together is very important. And I must commend you that uh, you have not been there for long, but you have, we have been working very well with you on the automotive city uh, development. But there are other areas of Swani, the southern part, this area around Centurion faces a big problem. It's, a, it's the, the area that has potential, but it's been going down. Uh, we have the eastern part of Swani, the Mendin area, which is rising. Uh, big, big, big potential there. Uh, huge investments are happening around that. We want to work together to ensure they create more employment. So what is the secret of it? The secret of it is working together. And the, that secret is, means the municipality must spend its money where it will reinforce the plan. So, MC Maide, when you get, you give them, you and national government give them the USDG. So we want to see that USDG including money on roads uh, and on transport to reinforce this vision about so we have this, we're building these nodes. We're going to settle people here. We need transport where? MMC, uh, Sheila. Where do we need public transport to break this? So that's the story of what we are talking about, is that we want to do that. In Ekurule, we have the same. So in Kiena, we want to, where is the Eastern Corridor? Let me quickly go there to the Eastern Corridor. Sabotage. <laughs> I could relate it to some type of insert. Okay. I want to go to the east. I'll come back to the other as well. Yes. I'm starting with there are two metros where we are working so well together that our vision is actually becoming not just a vision, it's becoming a reality. 
So next week, Mayor, next week, so I want to conclude with one. Next week, we are launching that automotive SEZ. Next week on the 5th. It's not a vision that will happen in 2030. So next week on the 5th, we are launching the Tswani Automotive SEZ. Ekurulen, we have been working with Ekurulen and on the Eretropo. That's our collective vision. We want to build that. The nature of the economy of Ekurulen must be anchored around the, that being the aviation hub, the biggest aviation hub in Africa, at the back of all our town. But there are important elements of that vision that you we have been working on that you would see there. Uh, and one of them, which the mayor likes a lot, is the University of Science and Technology. It's the only metro that has no university. Uh, all, of, all the two other metros have more than one university. But it will be entered in the Eretropolis. Uh, and in that Eretropolis, we are revitalizing manufacturing and getting a new, what's called manufacturing 4.0. Firstly, around rail manufacturing. And secondly, around, so transport, the transport economy is, go, is now the key driver of Ekurulene's modernization. Rail manufacturing, plus Akibela, those things are already happening. Trains are being manufactured there in Ekurulene. That project, I visited it, I don't, I'm not talking about ESA. It's a new modern rail <clears throat> hub for the continent. Young people, South African young people, are building trains, state-of-the-art trains, not just for Prasa, but trains they can beat, they compare with Brazil as a big train manufacturer, France. So that, that's a very important investment that uh, is taking place there. The Tambo Springs, the logistics hub, that's something that we will launch in the new year, 2020. It's a big truck project of the dry port of, uh, of Transnet. It's a, it's a 40 billion rand investment uh, in Ecorule to help us expand our logistics uh, capacity. Uh, and there are other major developments in that electropolis. One of them is the expansion of OR Tambo. That project has started the cargo terminal of OR Campo. That is an AFSA driven project, uh, including expanding OR Tambo's uh, <clears throat> uh, capacity to process more and more people over a period of time, uh, up to 25 million uh, uh, passengers, air passengers. Uh, that, that's what will make us to be the biggest aviation hub in Africa. And we are conscious, we are competing with Ethiopia and Kenya. Uh, they are doing great work there to ensure they, uh, they are aviation hubs. They bring more, more to planes, uh, global flights into their areas. It's not just about flight, colleagues. It's about an economy and the jobs that that, that creates. So, <clears throat> So again, I'm saying, because we have, so Ekurulene is directing its infrastructure budgets, especially on roads, uh, on utilities, to help us catalyze also this development. And the critical thing also is locating new human settlement developments in those nodes where we are going to have new economic activity in them. And public transport rollout, we launched this, this week, we launched Harambe, making sure there will be new public transport infrastructure. So if I go back to Tswani, I think part of the important thing in those corridors, in those nodes, uh, Roslyn, uh, Silverton, the public transport system will have to come in. And the human settlements development, if we're going to have 20,000 people working in a particular node, like in Roslyn, which is anticipated once the SEZ takes off. There's good developments taking place in that area, big, big human settlement development that the city and the province are driving in that. So we are planning for economic development as well as where people are going to settle and live. So I, I want to give an example of these two, these two, Two metros, they have big budgets. 
when they, we work together consciously on each project in each area, we can achieve a lot. Uh, I, I was with the mayor of Johannesburg yesterday and I've been talking to MMC Funzi, the MMC for finance, that we need to do that to check up that in Johannesburg. We have not been doing it as conscientiously as we are supposed to. Uh, Joburg MMCs, uh, I've been talking to your colleagues, I spoke to the mayor yesterday, I spoke to MNC Funzi, that we need to do that more conscientious, to drive development in Johannesburg in the same way. The city's resources and the province's resources must be directed in the same way. Uh, we will achieve more for our people because that's what we all try to do and catalyze uh, economic development. I know we are working together. Okay, now I'm now talking to Johannesburg. But I put Southern Corridor there. I must find you. Let me find you. Yes, Central Corridor. I know we are working on the Lanseria City Development. At least we have, we have been working together. Uh, MC Maile is now going to be driving that, working with the MMCs uh, in Joburg. We know that your focus was on the other corridors in the city. Uh, but we, 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 we think that, that the northern part of Johannesburg, the north and the northwestern part, has got huge potential. Uh, private sector people that have been saying they want to do things, we and you must help invest in bulk infrastructure that will catalyze development without ignoring the other areas. You know mid-range is a new place altogether. The mid-range four-ways area, Lots of development which is driven by the private sector, not by us. Again, we need to be more conscious to ensure that that development is desirable, it creates employment, it helps us to transform the space. Uh, it doesn't uh, create problems of certain sections of the population are excluded uh, and others uh, are left out. So again, we think if we work together on the there are many areas where things are driving themselves. The Santen Corridor is one of those huge diversity.
but the route there is through the Gaute Transport Authority. So we have now agreed, all of us, there will be one transport authority in Gaute. We have agreed on that. And that there will be a single ticket which can be used for all modes. So in the next three years in particular, the main energy is going to be on integration, including modernization of Krasa. These new trains that are being built here in South Africa, they must come on down. Uh, to replace the old, the old trains. So this, and we met with national government, including Plaza, to talk about the rollout plan. Mega human settlements, very, very important. We must put resources where we are building these new uh, mega human settlements. The Eretropolis master plan is entering a new uh, phase of implementation. The SEZs. The, all this is that we need to budget for bulk infrastructure. National government does, does provide for the top structure, but the municipalities and the province must provide for bulk. So this SEZ won't happen if we don't budget for bulk infrastructure, including for roads in those uh, areas. Uh, the Kopanum precinct is our problem, it's not your problem. A broadband network is our collective problem. We must network our, connect our people together. All these technology investments all of you are having must be coordinated. Same way like, so the language of coordination and the how to expansion. Uh, so colleagues, uh, I therefore conclude uh, by saying that, uh, is that, So one of the things we have uh, agreed to do with the mayors, with you mayors, is that I'm going to chair an infrastructure and investment committee. If we want these things to happen, they can be left to chairs. So we now establishing one committee at the provincial level, which will be chaired by me, which will bring in specific MECs who are key in the infrastructure and investment space, and then bring every mayor. So we went with, for every mayor, it's about unlocking everything in your corridor to give effect to the, our vision. Ensure that, and we are already doing that with the, with Ekurulene and Swane, but it is not at the center, it's on the side, on the sideways. Uh, we will do that with the municipalities, the dis we want to bring the mayors of the, the district mayor and the local mayors into that as well. So that we, we sit and look at how do we unlock development in each corridor and leave no one behind. But also how do we deal with red tape, guys? One thing that kills development is red tape. Things don't get approved. Government tools and throws. One department blaming another department. So we will establish a technical clearinghouse of officials from the municipalities and the province to help resolve all red tape related issues. And annually we will bring private sector people into a conversation. Not about plans, but how have we implemented things in each corridor? Because it's about driving implementation. The good thing is that the provincial government has 60 billion rents for infrastructure over the next five years. We look at your budgets that you presented to us. Together, your, your payments over five years, it's roughly more or less 40 billion rents over five years. Municipalities. So if you combine that with the province, we already have a 100 billion rent infrastructure fund. And we want to call it a fund so that it is dedicated, it's not tempered with. So once we agree that in this area, the, the municipalities will put aside this and we help in the district, we will help you also apply for big funding. If we have a big project, we must unlock there. We will get national culture and provincial culture and our two treasuries to help apply for big funding also for that. In advance, because these are not one-year projects, to help capital type of development. And in the end, we want jobs to be created. 
We don't want to share with you the job numbers. Uh, we are still verifying them. For all the projects we are talking about, we have the potential to create the jobs we need for our province, for people to begin to feel. But we can only do so if we work together for this, but also if we work with business and direct, we help them to direct their investments where we want them to be. So, so that's, that's it's not just our vision, but it is also our plan uh, to grow our way together. So thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Thank you very much. That's where we are going. I would, I would like to welcome those mayors who arrived when uh, we had started. I saw Mayor Baloy. Uh, I don't know if there's any other mayor who came thereafter. Okay. Mayor Baloy, yes. So I'm handing over immediately to continue our story. Our story is the same, but now this one's about the pipeline. Infrastructure pipeline. It's not general. So, NEC pipeline is going to speak. Over to you, NEC. Thank you. Um, Premier, I'd like the presentation is the package, but I'd like um, colleagues, mayors, and MCs to focus on the white um, of the, the left part of the presentation because the slides, a lot of them are too small to be able to read. But I'll speak to the presentation and then um, colleagues can then uh, be able to understand how you developed it, what is it, and what's the purpose. So, maybe the purpose of the, the, the 545 line, um, the important thing is to be able to give um, confidence to the public and private on the fact that our plans are, um, are budgeted for, they're specific, they can be located in a particular space. But also, beyond that, to be able to assist the private sector with information on where to make their investments. So that we direct, like the Premier said, direct where investment happens from the private sector as opposed to chasing. What we've done here is then, so fo following the Premier SOFA address this year, we were given the Department of Infrastructure Development the mandate to coordinate and develop the five project pipeline. The first pipeline, um, first iteration, what it did was it combined and collected all the information from Kauten Provincial Government um, and the projects that are there, the five year, their own five year plans, what are budgeted for and what are not budgeted for in the MTF, so beyond the MTF. Um, we then developed iteration 2, which is what um, you have in the package. And the iteration 2 then included human settlements projects, um, roads, and more, yeah, human settlements, some SOE, some national departments. What we are now busy developing is the third iteration will include national departments that we don't have, other SOEs that we don't have, and um, private sector. So really this is to be able to prioritize and assist the provincial government as a whole, together with the municipalities, to prioritize infrastructure and where it happens and there's science behind the prioritization. Embedded in the process is IDLS, so the infrastructure development, um, sorry, infrastructure delivery man, um, uh, management system, which is uh, for those in the infrastructure space understand that this is one national treasury regulation on how to deal with um, infrastructure delivery. So municipalities use it, provincial governments use it, even national departments. And nationally that um, role and responsibility of driving and using IDMS has been given to National Public Works and likewise the that responsibility is with, uh, is with provincial department of infrastructure development. Um, so over the past, the, 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 the previous, uh, the first administration, um, Department of Infrastructure Development built um, capabilities in what is housed in Lutsinga in the province. And that is to be able to coordinate <coughs> use IDMS as a backbone to service delivery. Um, using the stage gate process of being able to deal with approvals, um, budgets, and then monitor, um, monitor the, the delivery of the, of the projects. So what we have here is the second iteration. So 
the first, first iteration we had gave us 2032 projects with a budgeted um, investment value of 45 billion. Um, we then developed the socioeconomic impact out of that, and we were able to deduce that 238,000 jobs would be created with a combination of indirect and direct. We then added housing, ICT, in, and I, housing and ICT infrastructure, and that brought us to a consolidated um, projects over the, over the five years of 7,477. The first iteration showed us that we had a majority investment spend on social infrastructure. At the time, it was at 90% um, for social infrastructure and the balance for economic infrastructure or other. Majority of it still is with new builds, upgrades, and additions. And that was um, at an investment amount of 70 million. But combined with maintenance renovations and rehabilitation or refurbishment, um, which brought us to 18 billion, which is what gave us that total of 16.8 billion. So coming with the second iteration, we are now sitting on 8,021 projects across the province. Um, the investment value is anticipated to be at 89.9.8 billion. Social infrastructure now amounts for 70% of that, as opposed to 90% in the first. And that investment amount is sitting at 55 billion rand. Um, the pipeline also has a start, still has a start towards new building upgrades and additions. It's now sitting at 75%. And we have a lower number of projects combined across the province for maintenance, renovations, and rehabilitation. Um, which is a discussion that we've got to have um, going forward about how we weight uh, rehabilitation, refurbishment, um, maintenance, as opposed to new builds. Um, there is a lot of space for us to do reprioritization because they are either sitting in plan or the identify, identification stage of IDS. And when they are in that stage, you can either shift them or reprioritize their budget to do something like So we've used different strategies to be able to develop this. One is the, the infrastructure integrated master plan. Um, we've used um, the, the GCR, global city region, um, the different uh, SD, the, the, the different spatial development plans of the municipalities. Um, so we collated all of that information to be able to, to, to develop the um, project pipeline. Um, this is the premier spoke to, which would include um, the, 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 12, okay, let's see, let's see, the 12 major projects that will take place across the project, um, across the province. So, like I said, embedded in this process is the five um, IGFS stages. At the high level, it's the first, which is identification and visibility. Then it goes through detailed design. The next stage is procurement. And then we get into construction or execution. And finally, the handout, handover and closeout. And then within each of the five stages, there are other dependencies and other processes that must take place. Um, so at identification and visibility, we use different um, stakeholders and partners, especially municipalities, detailed designs there as well. Procurement ourselves together with uh, <coughs> and construction is ourselves um, and service providers. Handover and goes out to come back to partners such as municipalities. We've classified the, um, the, the, the infrastructure um, projects into two broad classifications. One is the social infrastructure, the second is economic infrastructure. Um, so how we develop the prioritization of a project so that we move away from um, badly planned projects or uh, pet projects or projects that are just um, built for the sake of being, being implemented without having some science behind it. We have five filters um, that will determine the output of where on the prioritization is stated. So the first is spatial, given the fact that we want to focus on, yes, the depressed economies, but also linkages to, the, um, to our neighboring provinces and I think the previous one quite extensively on that. The second was the strategic fit. The third filter is the project status, so the more ready it is, 
the more um, the, the higher on the list of priorities it will be. The fourth is social economic impact, and last but not least is the integration and dependencies. So the more um, dependencies that we met, and the more integration, um, um, in, in, the more integrated it meets, it will then um, be higher on the prioritized list. After we've done the after we filter them through the five filters, we then check for compliance. It then will give us it will then give us a prioritization. So they either will be low, medium, or high priority with a score. So a project will be named with a um, with a reference or a, a tagging system, and that project will be given a score and determined on determined on. And this slide basically tells us what are we looking at when we look at filter four, for example, or um, for for purposes of this discussion, filter five, integration and dependencies, um, title deeds, is there bound infrastructure, is there electrification, are there roads or road connection and transport available? Those are dependencies. So the first filter was is given a weighting of three, and that's a spatial spatial filter. It's given a weighting of three, whether you meet or um, all of those requirements, and the filter score will give you either one zero point five or the red. Okay, but ultimately the spatial score gives you a weighting of three across the um, the weighting. The second filter, which was a strategic fit, gives you a weighting of two, and that is whether it's met or not met. So if it is met, you get a score of one. If it's not met, your score is zero. Filter three, which is the project status, has a weighting of two. Um, if it is at construction to final account stages in line with the IDNS, you get a higher score. But if it is identified to planning stage or the first, first points of the um, IDNS stage gates, you then get a lower score. Um, lastly, is the, or the third filter, sorry, the fourth filter is the socioeconomic impact. Um, we look at the population per corridor, jobs created per corridor, contribution to the um, GDP, and the gross value added per sector. And they are each given a point, um, point zero two five score. Ultimately, it is then um, scored one point five, and the state the, and the, the, the weighting of the social social economic impact is two. And the last filter is the integration and dependencies. There we look at four aspects that are listed there as indicated and they get a score out of 1.5. And then that weighting will kick out the project and give you a weighted score and then give you, give you a list of priorities. So at a high level, this is what I've spoken about. So we have the 8,021 infrastructure across, projects across, 72% of, of, of a social infrastructure nature and sitting at 54.8 billion investment. 40%, um, and that is 40% of the total anticipated infrastructure investment amount. New goals, upgrades, and additions still make up 75% of what is currently in the pipeline. Roads and transport, with the largest sector for infrastructure investment, is sitting at 29.7 billion, with 87% of these projects in design. Um, health, the second largest sector, is uh, has an amount, investment amount of 22.5 billion, and 48% of these are maintenance. Um, so when we look at per sector, we are able to seg um, aggregate whether it is new builds or new, build, new builds upgrades and addition or maintenance. So um, um, this, uh, oh, Joe, the, the prioritization the here then speaks to whether we are in line with the overall strategy of the province. Uh, so roads and transport, two, yes. But to be able to bring in and attract investment, uh, private investment, but also to expand economic opportunities, you've got to have um, new builds in terms of roads and transport. And then, given the given the current um, status of the health infrastructure in the province, we are giving 48% of the budget towards maintenance. So at any point in the in the in the pipeline, um, the colleagues will be able to get pictures that look like this. This then gives us per corridor a presentation of what is in each corridor in terms of actual projects and the percentage of the overall. On the right hand side, it gives you the red value of the investment. 
And every time we change the situation, then they will be able to, to tell us whether we are still sticking to the strategic priorities of the province. So currently, we still have skewed, um, skewed investment and development towards the metros, and it goes back to what I spoke about, about those projects in identification and planning stage that can be moved out of metros and be moved to the, south, the south, southern, southern and western corridors. At any point in the, in the pipeline, colleagues will be able to get a page that looks like this, and you will get a breakdown on one page of what is happening in your space. So this is the Southern Corridor. It tells you the story of what has happened in the first iteration, what has happened in the second iteration, the percentage of infrastructure types um, per classification, and then um, and how it moves to the vision of, 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 of the Gauteng city. And that is designed for each of the each of the corridors. So the west that gives you what then in the corridor, in the pipeline, you can use a page that looks like this, She's and this gives you the pipeline by stages. Uh, overall projects and maintenance. So this out of the 8,021 projects and maintenance projects, 1,778 are in identification and visibility. The second stage is sitting at 376 procurement. We are already with 2,124 procurement. Construction is at 623, and handover we are handing over 42. So where we can, where we have opportunities to redirect is in the 1,778 to be able to push them to meet our strategic fit, uh, social economic impact, etc., etc. And this will be the same for new replacement upgrades, and that gives you the picture of overall. So currently, we have, we have an opportunity again to reprioritize because 51% of the projects are sitting with a low priority scoring. That means they either, have to, they either don't have dependencies, they don't meet the socioeconomic um, impact uh, priority, they do not not spatially, um, spatially in line with our priorities. So 51% of them can be moved to become um, high priority. Then in the pipeline for provincial departments, they will get a page that looks like this. And in the pipeline for every department, this is, will give you your prioritization per, um, for, the, for that year and then for the five years. So out of the, all the projects of education, 394 are priority. This is just 20 of them. It gives you the priority score and why they are prioritized, whether there's a budget, the current project status, and the project type. Um, so this is for health, community safety, and each department will be able to just look at their page, zoom in, and see where there are opportunities to move, shift, reprioritize, or address backlogs. Um, so for instance, dependencies that need to be addressed um, will be able to be showed here. In the pipeline, you can then have a look at this, which gives you a sector um, overview. Um, so one page will be able to tell you per department exactly what, is, what you are doing, um, where you are in terms of the contribution, the spend, um, and then the classification, and the classification in, line, in terms of new goals or refurbishment. So this is for education. Um, and then the second will be able to tell you where that spending is geographically in percentage-wise and project terms, and then look, um, different, each department will look at um, this page and this to be able to address what we want to address, where we have an opportunity to do so. And this gives you a diagra uh, the diagram of the, of the pipeline IDFS percentage. Um, so it will tell you where your opportunities lie to be able to redirect, change, or address issues. Um, detailed design and, one, uh, and uh, identification and feasibility, but also these, are, if they are not addressed, identification and feasibility, you might not get to uh, procurement construction and handover. So that's the same for each department. Um, just on economic infrastructure, currently there are 99 infrastructure projects at 29.8 billion. 
Um, 1% is roads and transport with new upgrades and additions at the cost of 66% of um, what they are doing. Um, refurbishments are 34%, but importantly would be this to look at where in the corridors that projects are being uh, refurbished, rebuilt, uh, built new, and um, where, the, where the spend is going, um, and then the percentage or number uh, of the projects. And then we have alternative funding projects. So these are currently, we have 22 projects, um, and those are the type of infrastructure. infrastructure. So they are water and sanitation. Um, they range from both economic and social infrastructure and the project cost um, and where they are, where they are located. Um, let me just say here, Premier, for, for, for purposes of this session, Importantly is um, we've got to, um, Premier, you spoke about the clearinghouse of processes between ourselves and municipalities, which is critically important. Um, we've got to address issues of, um, of land between the owners, um, either municipal owned land and uh, provincial owned land, and have a seamless process between ourselves and municipalities on land swaps um, or long-term leases, wherever the case may be. Um, because without resolving land issues, you can't get into either feasibility, ownership, handover, they get stuck. Um, and then you've spoken, Premier, about the, um, the other dependencies, such as bulk. Um, and then quite critically important for this conversation would be township establishment um, and, and zoning. That is the responsibility of municipalities to be able to allow for these to, 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 to take place. If the dependencies are not in place, um, this, this 60 billion over the over the five years will not be spent. And I mm. think the important thing is to to just reiterate that we have neither the time nor the money not to spend. Mm. Um, so if we want to see all these figures of development, of attracting investment, of um, of making socio-economic impact changes, especially in depressed economies, but also in in the, in the metros, we've got to find ways of working together, um, especially where processes go from department to department for approvals, but also those interdependencies from both, not only just budgets and, and trying to get um, uh, different grants uh, applying and, and, and that sort of thing. But for, um, so that's where we are. We've not, we don't have, like I said, all the municipal projects in this second iteration but they are going into the third iteration. So all of that is going to be pushed up. Um, we also don't have all national departments here. So all of that information, once we get it, the third iteration will push up all these figures. And then finally to get um, private sector plans and where they want to take place will then push up um, and we'll be able to see all, all economic activity in the province as one, as one picture. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, MC Mutara. Uh, colleagues, that, that uh, concludes our story, and we are going to go into a session with you later where municipalities will also be able to give us a bit more content. Although your, your MMCs for finance did, uh, I mean the district ones uh, and the metro ones, uh, but the districts should know that the MMCs for Finance had very little to say about their districts. Your district MMCs for Finance had very little to say, uh, except what we know ourselves. So I just want, so as we conclude this session, we will have an opportunity to discuss later. Just conclude by saying that uh, we have been meeting with business uh, in, for, in each project, in each corridor, investment project. We have been meeting with business on the projects in Ekuruleni, on the projects in Tswani, where business says we want to invest this amount of money in this type of activity. And in some instances, these issues have been sent back to the mayors to say these are the things business says the municipality must do. We have been meeting with business in Johannesburg as well, 
Uh, we've been meeting with business in, 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 uh, in Sidibeng and in the Western on the specific projects that we ourselves know. Uh, we will next, on the 21st of November, we are going to have an investment, the Gauteng Investment in Daba. You remember there's a national investment conference coming that deals with the country and the globe. And then there's the Africa Investment Forum that deals with the continent. But on the 21st of November, we will have, and we're bringing specific business people who are in your corridors who have come to us to say, this is a, a project we want to, wanted to do, but we have difficulties with getting it going because of approvals or because there's no bulk infrastructure uh, or because the municipality is not cooperating with us. On the 21st of November, we are going to bring 